Okay, this is uh, guidance for uh, 7100 PG uh, component one. That's reflector review due during uh, uh, phase two B. Uh, to reiter reiterate what I talked about in December, I well, a recommended uh, approach to reflection is using J. N. Johnson's uh, typology of reflection, which is a, a three-step approach. Uh, it's not the only way to do reflection. Uh, and it's not meant to be giving you a structure of how you should be doing it. It is, it is giving you uh, different levels so which you can so you can look at and you can make judgments about your own reflections to see uh, how deep you're uh, you're going. So the first level is descriptive, uh, and and description is really important. It's not that it's they, that we want to put it at the bottom rung uh, of reflection. It is really important. Uh, there's a lot in research circles talked about thick description, the importance of really giving detailed and relevant description. Uh, but that should be seen as a, as a starting point before you, you uh, develop and you go farther into your analysis. So, so you're, you're, you're narrating an experience in your reflections, uh, so, so you're retelling uh, a story as you've experienced it, so you begin, you're beginning very often with a description uh, of the relevant aspects. And that takes a little bit of thought to get your head around what that means. The second level is comparative, uh, and th at this point you start to look at uh, the views of others, and this could include looking at literature, looking at research, looking at pedagogy books, but it can also include uh, talking to uh, your mentors in school, talking to your peers, talking to your tutors in university, uh, and so on. Uh, and the third level within the typology uh, that Jane Johnson I put forward is uh, I, the critical. So, so it's, it's looking at at the end of it, what are the implications uh, for your future practice, and how has it changed your perspective about teaching or about that aspect of teaching. So, so J. N. Johnson, I, I also put together with the paper, and the, the reference at the end will will give you the paper that you can go to. I, they they give some prompt questions, so I'm not going to spend time going through and just reading those questions. You can do that for yourself. Uh, but there are three sets of questions. The the second uh, level, the comparator level, uh, you can if you remember back to uh, the GPS lectures last uh, semester, uh, it was talked about Brookfield's four lenses. Uh, this fits not quite nicely within this uh, level of comparison. Uh, so you can compare. So you're seeing things through the student's eyes. That's your own eyes. Uh, you're seeing it through colleagues' perceptions. Your feedback from your from your mentors. Uh, you're seeing it through a theory and research uh, perspective, but you're also uh, might look at it in certain aspects about how you're developing your 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 story as a development from before you were a teacher to where you are now and where you're going, uh, and that's sort of leading into that critical bit that uh, uh, that uh, uh, looking at the implications for your future practice and how it's changed your ideas. So again, the critical level. Uh, what what I don't want to encourage you to do is to see. Uh, the uh, the three levels as you start with some description, then you do your your comparative, then you do your critical. That's one way of doing it, but it's just one way. Uh, and this typology of reflection uh, from J. N. Johnson is just it's just one approach. So so uh, so I'm not trying to suggest this is the only way to do it. This is a way to do it, which we found has been quite successful. I also talked about an alternative approach, which which looks at particularly an engineering and electronics and electrical engineering perspective is the the systems approach, uh, and and this uh, diagram above uh, will will be familiar to some of you. Uh, and in the systems approach, uh, you'll quite often look at the output first. So you look at that description of what actually what actually happened. What were the learning outcomes you expected, and did that actually happen? Uh, so then looking at the input. In that stage, uh, I, so what did you put into that lesson? How did you prepare it for it? What 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 planning had gone in? Uh, so this is assuming it's a it's a a lesson based activity, uh, and thirdly, what what factors influenced uh, the uh, the incident? So what was the what were the processes going on? What were the knock on effects and so on? Uh, and then that critical bit that that feedback. So so how how were you going to feed that back into your into your practice. So what did your lesson observations say if you had a, someone observing you, giving you feedback? What did your own lesson evaluations say? What, what did the literature say? So that's, that's an alternative way that you might find helpful uh, in looking at it. Okay, so thinking about the, the assignment itself. Uh, it's the phase 2b reflector re review, although it can span back from phase, phase 1 
to fa phase 2b. Uh, so it's that time in, in, the, in the placement or placements for, for those who are doing engineering uh, where, where you are at the moment and what your experiences have, be, have been. The majority of those are, are most likely to be later in phase 2a and, uh, and between the start of phase 2b and, and when you uh, submit the assignment. It's 2,000 words, so it's quite concise. Uh, it's worth 40% of the module marks, so that the second component is uh, taking up the other 60%, but you've also within this uh, module is your ePortfolio, and that's an assessed part, it's a pass or fail um, uh, within within that module, uh, but it's assessed differently, it's not marked, it's it's giving feedback and giving, giving, giving advice as we go along, so that's why it's really important you keep your ePortfolio up to date. Uh, as you go through. Uh, the submission date is the 20th of February. Uh, that's going to be electronic through Blackboard uh, and you can find more information on the in the module handbook and I think it's on page 18. Okay so guidance for this assignment. Uh, it's all about reviewing your progress uh, and looking at the standards. So you're not looking at every single standard, you're picking out uh, specific standards. Okay, and you're making reference to the learning you've developed as a teacher through uh, the phase activities, through ten training sessions, what you've read, what lectures you've been to. So it's reflecting in all aspects. So you should bring all aspects of the course so far uh, in, into your mind as you're identifying the, uh, uh, the incidents that you're going to write about. And you need to discuss your teaching in terms of any educational ideas, theories. So it must include literature. It must include references to, to, to theory and pedagogy. Uh, and I strongly advise looking at research literature as well. That will strengthen uh, your, uh, uh, your writing. Okay, so, uh, so when you think about critical incidents, I, I, we're talking about it could be classroom situations, it could be th things arising from tutorials, uh, either within school or with your liaison tutor on, on a visit. Uh, it's, uh, it might uh, be a critical incident which is beginning in, in reading or beginning in a university session where, where something is, has really stuck out in your mind. I'll, I'll talk a little bit later about what a critical incident is. Okay, and think about what's influenced and changed your approach to teaching. So it's all about, uh, about you as a teacher developing, uh, reflecting and changing your practice, improving your, your practice. Uh, and you're going to use the review to set targets. The end of your assignment should have some smart targets which are going to lead into your phase three tutorial. And those should be things that you're, you're taking forward into your next placement. Okay, so the question, what is a critical incident? Uh, Critical in this case means it's a formative incident, uh, so so it's not something that's that's gone badly. Uh, it, it could be something that's gone badly, but it's not. It, it's a critical incident, so it's something that's formative in your in, in your development as a teacher, and uh, and it's around your achievements in school, uh, and it can be both in and out of the classroom. Uh, you might talk about difficulties in conscious eyes. Uh, you might talk about difficulties and how you address these, uh, and and how views appropriate educational ideas and theories un underpin your practice. Now it could also be, your reflection could be how you would then go on to, from based on this experience, to use educational theory. And how have you linked uh, our practice into ideas from current educational lit literature? So it's starting to get, get you engaging in that thinking. Okay, there, there's two suggested structures and, and it's, it's really personal choice. What we've done in the past is we've had uh, you, you'll have in both essays an introduction should include, include uh, a description without naming the school uh, uh, without putting any personal information of the context that you're that you're in and say a little bit about yourself and your experience and uh, within the main part of the reflection uh, in the past we, we've broken it down into the three uh, areas within the QTS standards uh, and those are shown on the screen now so that's that's one way you could break it up you could choose one standard so sorry not one standard one um, I, one incident for each of those groups and, and a main standard which you'll quote at the beginning uh, but uh, you, you will, will then reference other standards alongside that and then your conclusions looking at the implications for practice uh, and, and the conclusions will also include your, uh, your uh, targets as well and references uh, as well. Uh, the appendices within, within this assignment will be your subject knowledge audit 
and your IDP, your, your individual development plan. So the second structure is based around the Banks and Barlex subject knowledge construct that we talked about, looking at three different areas of, of teacher knowledge, uh, school knowledge, subject knowledge and pedagogic knowledge. Uh, apart from that, it is pretty much the same as uh, I uh, in the structure as the previous one, but instead of those three uh, QTS standards based groupings, it's looking at subject knowledge and pedagogical knowledge and school knowledge and conclusions again the same and references and, uh, and appendices. So uh, in the introduction you need to, uh, as I've said, talk about the context of the school, talk about your background, subject knowledge, experience prior to the PGCE. Uh, you want to do a brief overview of, of key issues for you throughout uh, attachment one, that's phase through to phase one through to phase two B. Uh, and you might say something about the structure of the essay and the rationale behind doing that. So whether which of those two structures have you chosen and why have you chosen to do that? Uh, and and do make reference to to the the approach to re, uh, to reflection that you're taking, whether or not you choose uh, J and Johnson or whether you go for Brookfield or another uh, framework for for reflecting. So that so the sections uh, in the middle, the main sections, which are, are going to be the critical instances. Uh, so, uh, so you can either use the three QTS standard groups or the three subject knowledge construct categories. Uh, you should quote the standard, at the, the main standard at the beginning of each section, verbatim, so the full uh, Q number and what the standard says. Uh, and also, as you're going through the critical incident, any other standards which are touching upon should be identified in brackets at the end of the sentence or the end of the section that's relevant. You should choose a total of three critical incidents, one which fits in each of the areas that you've cho uh, chosen, uh, either the, the structure A or the structure B, uh, and you should describe each incident. Use literature to compare uh, your experience with, with D&T pedagogy, uh, compare progress using weekly meetings, targets, observations, etc. And be critical, and it's key here, be critical, don't criticise. It, it can be a common misconception that being critical is is about being harsh. It's about getting to the roots and understanding the implications uh, of uh, of an issue uh, or an incident. And and make sure you do refer to targets you've put in the IDP, evidence you've gathered, and your subject knowledge audit. And uh, in in other words, your subject knowledge developments. So you should be at least talking in one um, of the of the critical instance, something around subject knowledge would be, would be my strong recommendation. Okay, your conclusions are going to be your implications for phase three. Uh, you're going to reflect on phase 2A and 2B report forms, whatever is available at the time. Uh, you'll refer to QTS standards to be focused on in the future. So think about, well, what are the targets which are coming up in weekly meetings? Are there some that you're, that, that you're finding more challenging to, to get evidence for? Uh, and give a description, don't just put a target, give a, a, a rationale uh, for each target. So you might do that target, then write below the rationale for that target. You could put it in a table. Uh, that's, that's up to yourself how you present that. But I uh, have, um, I guess, between, between uh, three and six uh, smart targets or smarter targets. So, so you need to go back and you need to just make sure that your, your targets are specific, measurable, achievable. Uh, realistic time bound, uh, they're educational uh, and they're, they're reviewed. Okay, so so uh, I, I, so moving on, appendices we've talked about, essential individual development plan, subject knowledge audit, other things you might but only where relevant, don't pack out your, your appendices, could include other things which you which you refer to within the essay, it should only be things you refer to directly in the essay. If you don't refer to it, uh, then don't expect uh, the, uh, the person who's marking it to, to refer to that particular appendix. Okay, and finally to finish off, uh, the reference uh, to the Banks and Barlicks paper about the subject knowledge construct and the J. N. Johnson uh, paper uh, on the type, typology of reflective practice. I hope this has been helpful to you and good luck with your, with your assignment.